Today, we welcome to Global Citizenship Education Interview Series, Charles Hopkins. Charles Hopkins holds the UNESCO Chair in Reorienting Education Towards Sustainability at York University in Toronto, Canada. This chair, established in 1999, was the first to focus on Education for Sustainable Development, ESD, as a central concept to quality education and to position sustainability as the purpose of education. Today, ESD is recognized as a key enabler in the pursuit of sustainable development. Hopkins coordinates two global ESD research networks, the International Network of Teacher Education Institutions and the at Indigenous ESD. The first network is comprised of teacher education institutions spanning 50 country and countries and focuses on enhancing ESD in pre-service and in-service teacher training. The second network covering 40 countries aims to embed sustainability in curricula to improve the education of indigenous youth. Internationally, Hopkins has a long relationship with education and sustainability, chairing the writing and adoption processes of several UNESCO ESD declarations. As a part of the UN preparation for the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, in 1992, Hopkins was one of the drafters of the Chapter 36 of Agenda 21, Education, Public Awareness and Training. Hopkins has been a part of UNESCO's efforts to develop education for sustainable development and also chaired the writing process of the Ban Declaration on ESD 2009 and the Aichi Nagoya Declaration on ESD 2014 an awarded education leader with three honorary doctorates for his achievements. Hopkins has lectured and presented papers for in more than 75 countries. His leadership experience includes position as a regional school superintendent, as a superintendent of curriculum with Canada's largest school board, and as well as leadership roles in the not-for-profit sector. Hopkins also served as a co-director of the Asia-Pacific Institute on ESD in Beijing, China. So, Charles, a rich, <laughs> diverse um, background. It's a pleasure to have you here with us, a Global Citizenship Education Interview Series. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, I apologize for the... Uh... <laughs> The long introduction, it, it's a matter of longevity, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful background, uh, and um, uh, I was really, really impressed about the diversity of your experiences, and then it tells a lot about your precious contribution to the field. And um, so thank you very much yeah. once again, Charles. Thank um, you. I want to uh, jump straight into our conversation with... Uh, I would mm -hmm. say straightforward question. And the question is, in your mm -hmm. opinion, what is a global citizenship education and how would you define a global citizen? Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> well, <clears throat> as you can tell, even though you read that long introduction, uh, global citizenship did not, uh, education did not come up. Right. <laughs> I, I'm not really a scholar in this field, um, uh, but I, I certainly have perceptions of it, and I include it um, when I'm dealing with education for sustainable development. I, yeah. I see them as extremely complementary and so on. Uh, let me take it um, almost in reverse. Um, let me talk about a global citizen. I, I think global citizens are concerned with and willing to act. It, it's the, the two things, to act in the big picture, yeah. um, un understanding and addressing the realities of what is happening beyond the local. And, and in a context of past, uh, the present, and the future. So it, it's that... Uh, that sort of is the picture I have in mind. I have not written to define in any way. I would never, you know, sort of go that way. But I have lectured a bit on, on global citizenship uh, education. And uh, I, what I try to do is I look at global citizenship education as the enabler, the builder of global citizens. So that means that 
uh, it, it global citizenship education it develops the appetite to want to become a global citizen and it helps them find accurate information mm -hmm. it uh, it develops the perspectives and values to interpret that knowledge and information that that you find out there you know it it has to be put in context etc uh, mm. Global citizenship education um, helps to acquire the skills to both listen and to engage, you know, building compassion and solidarity mm. with others. <laughs> and really an important aspect is it builds the skill sets to yeah. take informed, effective action as a citizen. So those are the the attributes I think of, of when I, I refer to a global citizenship education. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. The action part is very interesting. I want to also ask you uh, a question related to education for sustainable development. Um, you mentioned that you like to think of global citizenship education as an umbrella term. And of course, there is always discussion uh, on the relationship, for example, between global citizenship education, education for sustainable development, and so forth. How do you see the two uh, platforms connecting each other, ESD and GC? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't see one being umbrellaed under the other. You know, mm. you, you always, it, it's whatever you start with as the concept, everything else is under it. Yeah. So if I start, uh, if, if I start with the concept of wheel, then an automobile wheel is one subset. But if I think of, to start with automobile, then the wheel is a subset, right? So... Mm. It doesn't. I, I don't look at one being un, under any other umbrella. I see them as complementary. Education for sustainable development uh, does not uh, uh, have so much about developing the skills to actively engage and become uh, and and taking part as a citizen. Right. Okay. Education for sustainable development. There were four parts that we added. We we built into it. And if you want, we can talk a little bit more later about about Rio and when we were coming up with the concept of education for sustainable development. First yes. of all, ESD is simply a purpose of all education. It it's not a subject. Right? It's not what we call an adjectival subject, you know, like mm. peace education, uh, environmental education, driver education, anti-drug education, sexual education, all, all, all of those things. Okay? Right, right. Education itself for sustainable development is is really what we're what we're looking at. And so it gives the knowledge and skills, the background into social, environmental, and economic issues and so on. But at the heart of education for sustainable development is actually access and retention in quality education. We won't have any development without an educated public. So that is a concept that was never a part of global citizenship. Right, right, right. You know, so the two of them work very nicely together. They become much more of a, of a useful, holistic approach to building a more sustainable future. Absolutely, absolutely. How would you, uh, in a way, um, describe two or three core uh, themes as they relate to education for sustainable development and then uh, attached to this question, I also want to ask you a question that all my guests here would consider very interesting. And the question is how concepts of ESD, global citizenship, potentially relate to your personal life journey? Hmm. 
Well, in, in the beginning, those what are the are the aspects? As I said, the one aspect is access and retention in quality education, and we can have all kinds of discussions about what is a quality education, mm -hmm. education that does not address the future of people and the planet uh, is not, in my eyes, a quality education. And I agree. Absolutely. Now, we, can, we can get into what are the the issues that are out there, and certainly climate change is a huge one. Is that an environmental issue? Only in a current mm. context of many people. But it is, if you are uh, displaced because of climate change, with drought, flood, or whatever, it rapidly becomes a social issue, especially mm you are forced to migrate to a different country. The people who are crossing the Mediterranean right now on life rafts and so on, mm. for them, it is an economic issue. It is a social issue. It is an environmental issue that has forced them into it. And their life in the future is one that, that is complex. It's not ESD. It's not global citizenship, education, etc. But these are attributes that must be within the receiving population as well as within them. Okay. So that's, that's sort of how, how uh, I look at it. Absolutely. If you think about my own personal journey, I'd, um, you know, if, because of my age, this could, this, this could take several weeks. Uh, but I, I began my journey um, in sort of a rural area and uh, in northern Canada and heavily involved in the environment, uh, which I think set the foundation for care and concern, a love of the natural environment. Um, but then as uh, later in my teen years, I joined the Navy and uh, traveled to uh, Latin America and uh, uh, Central America, and so on. And it, it whet my appetite as a very young person uh, for a global perspective. And when I became a teacher, uh, I went back to teaching about the environment in natural science and so on, and became sort of a pioneer educator in what was then called in, in the in a very late 1950s, early 1960s, is outdoor education, education mm -hmm. in the environment, experiential education, etc. As it, it, I go back to that far, that when the concern was that it wasn't simply education in the out of doors, but it should be education for the environment mm. and the birth of environmental education. And I, I was part of all of that. Um, and then uh, the big life changer was Rio. I was involved as one of a team of about 10 people who were to explore and write the chapter in the first global implementation plan for sustainable development, it was called Agenda 21. You know, currently now we have the 2030 agenda for uh, uh, yeah. the 17 sustainable development goals. Well, that's the third implementation plan. The first was Agenda 21, then the Millennium yeah. Development Goals, and then we went on to currently. But at any rate, in trying to figure out what was the role of education, we came up with four things. The first one was access and retention in quality education. But the second one was recognizing it was our most educated uh, countries that were leaving some of the, the, uh, the deepest ecological footprints and creating through colonization and so on, a lot of the social injustices, yeah. et cetera. So what we, the second goal then was to reorient the purpose of education and then vo avoid trying to come up with sustainability education, because that just becomes another in a long list of what we called adjectival educations. The third one was access, um, the uh, public awareness and understanding, because we realized that countries could not move democratic countries at any rate could not move without the support of the general public so there was mm -hmm. uh, you know the, the, 
I don't know about other countries, but in my country, often we think that the main goal is of government is not good governance, but staying in Canada. In, in Canada. Yeah. So, the, you know, so the public awareness and understanding and support, not only for the public sector, for government, but for mm. the private sector. So the people would knowledgeably select what they were going to purchase, you mm -hmm. know, and to understand where was it made, fair trade, uh, what is the ecological footprint of the product, need versus greed, all those kinds of things. And then the fourth aspect was training, where we do know how to do things better, whether it's agriculture, manufacturing, sewage treatment plants, or, or whatever, uh, teaching, for instance. How do we we train the professionals that are there and train the new people entering into the workforce? So those were sort of the four aspects of education for sustainable development. So if you see global citizenship as giving them this the, the willingness to engage, the compassion, the solidarity, as well as the skills to effectively engage. That's another one that really struck me, of course, was after Rio, I became superintendent of curriculum for, say, Canada's uh, largest, largest school board. So suddenly you're back in the situation where it's not just about global citizenship education. Right. You know, it, it, it's about addressing the core skills that get measured all the time the, the one mathematics language and so on how do you develop mm. that but at the same time how do we build the soft skills that mm. include uh, global citizenship uh, that include relationships not right. only in your own community but globally how do we de develop a, a solidarity with others where others are not necessarily limited to humans? It could be all life forms. Absolutely. So how do we build that in to the very foundation, not making it an option at university mm. that a handful of people, you know, nicely take, but how is that built into education at all levels? Absolutely. Do you think there is a lack of uh, uh, values in nowadays, higher education, education in more general? Uh, I, I feel that, um, skills are really emphasized much less so values what do you think about this yeah uh, it it depends on the culture in in some mm. countries they look at this as values are at the heart of it and in other countries they do not want education systems addressing values whatsoever i say right. values are the parents responsibility and whether they um, bring them through through their own modeling or through religious practices or whatever. But I think it, uh, no matter how it is there, values are formed. Mm -hmm. And, and I, um, I, whether you can actually develop values or do you bring them forward do you put them in situations where students choose and so on and of course what do, what do the education systems themselves model because right. often values are picked up just from your surroundings yeah, you know, yeah. Who, who you are with, what you hear, what you see from that, uh, the informal education that goes on, let alone the, what you pick up from the hidden curriculum, you know, that which is not really addressed, but you better be aware of. Absolutely. What are two or three values that you consider uh, core or important uh, when it comes to discussions around uh, ESD and global citizenship? I think uh, uh, seeking the truth, mm. push pushing forward, and, and and seeking the truth. A, a second one is, is a, a shift uh, from self centeredness to compassion for others. 
And that's very difficult because most of our school systems are, are geared towards the, the individual mm. becomes all they can be. You know, the, the role of the teacher is to nurture the student to become all, all, all they can be. Mm. I, th I think the shift is coming as we're looking at education also as a common good. Mm. That we must move beyond the individual, uh, from me to we. The the idea um, of um, a, a, a future that uh, is plural. We talk about futures because we we don't want to come up with any one. Right? Mm. Uh, but uh, that is full of, of caring and compassion, not just for others presently, uh, but uh, for future generations. This, is, uh, this must be of, of, of great concern. And that's a very, very different way of, uh, of looking at it, especially in those countries where uh, in higher education, people pay so you know, tuition fees that are High tuition you know, fees. and so on. And they mm. expect the return on their tuition to really enable them to live as, as well as possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another value I think that would be extremely important is exploring the concept of well-being. What, mm. what is... What does well-being really mean beyond well-off? Mm, mm, mm. The concept of well-being, bringing meaningfulness to one's life, the, the, the soft skills of being able to relate to other people. Right. To being able to cope with what you won in the birth lottery, you know, mm. female. Where were you born? What's the color of your skin? Who are your parents? How? What? Mm. What kind of uh, of a setting were you born into? Was there a school nearby? Was there a good school nearby that that you could you could go to for free? You know, all all of these kinds of of things that are determined in your birth lottery, you must deal with. And these are all things that are not overtly dealt with in schooling today. And so do you, do you think that nowadays higher education institutions and uh, institutions more in general are so interested in students' life journeys or they are much more interested in their skill sets? I think they're much more interested in skill sets because mm. that's what parents at the moment want. Right, right, and that's and students themselves. So th this kind of a of, of a, a concept of educating for the futures is simply at the discussion level. Mm -hmm. And but the thing I feel and why I, I pour my life into it is is that we need to address this as quickly as we can because. It, Every day that goes on, it 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 makes it harder to change. Yes, it's a it's a sort we of have. a vicious cycle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at mm. least let, let's discuss it. Let's get it out in the open. And I'm so pleased that uh, UNESCO, you know, about every 25 years or so, they hold major major reflection on the purpose of education. Mm. You know, yeah. We had Delors report in 1996. Mm. That was the last one where we looked at the purpose of education being to know, to do, to be, and to live together. And now we're looking at it again in a whole process called the futures of education. And in that that's where the idea of education also being a common good yeah. and uh, th that is an important shift. So not only all you can be, but what others can be. 
Absolutely. And without you being your uh, achievement, limiting that of others. Very interesting. And so we are heading towards the end of this very interesting uh, conversation. A couple of more questions. The first one is, um, could you discuss uh, a little bit about the significant work you're engaged in, in the, as the UNESCO chair in reorienting education towards sustainability at York University? I think this will be very interesting uh, to, our, to our audience here. Right. Well, I think uh, uh, you mentioned that th we have two research networks. One is looking at how we can reorient teacher education to mm. address sustainability. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the, the United Nations pointed out that education for sustainable development was the key enabler of all of the sustainable development goals and that uh, education needs to be involved. However, the world's teachers, two thirds of them feel that they do not have the background to actually be able to do it. So we're looking yeah. into how we can engage that. The, the second one is how can education for sustainable development, both the, 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 not only the topic, but the, but the methodology and so on, how could that help to improve the education of the least well-served people in the world? That is the world's well-served by their education system. And that is the world's indigenous people. So that is another one that uh, that we are working on. I had uh, with colleagues in 18 different countries, the high scoring PISA countries, you know, the, the OECD mm. measures how well education systems do in math, language and science uh, every so often. And we went into those high scoring countries and found school systems that embedded ESD in what they were doing to see if ESD was a choice that you had to make to give up your PISA or could you work on ESD or could you do both? And when the research showed that doing both actually rounded out the education and improved it overall. So we thought if it works for these lucky people, could we use the same concepts and work with the world's indigenous people? And so that's the the other big network in about 50 countries. And it is nicely uh, working there. Um, and then the other work that uh, we're, we're uh, working on is how do you localize the, the SDGs into something that's locally relevant, meaningful, culturally appropriate, mm. and, uh, and, and actually have movement at the local level. The negotiations around climate change and so on between countries moves at a, a glacial speed. And unfortunately, the glaciers are retreating. They aren't even, <laughs> they aren't unfortunately, even. Unfortunately, yeah. You know? So, but at the local level, it's not about negotiations because you're not giving up anything for someone else. You, you're simply improving yourself. It is a whole different concept. So we spent a, a fair bit of time working with um, something called regional centers of expertise in ESD. It's a United Nations University program in about 175 major cities and regions around the world as to how to localize sustainability action and what is the role of education, public awareness, understanding, and training in doing this. So Absolutely. those are some of the big, the significant things that we're working on now. Very interesting. And I guess this then will develop into possible publications. Is there any specific yeah. uh, publication, forthcoming publication that you'd like to uh, briefly mention uh, yeah. in our conversation? Yeah, there are a, a number of, of publications that are out there, but one of the ones that we're working on now that will soon be, be published through UNESCO is on the kind of leadership that is needed mm -hmm. to, uh, to try and do this. Because so much of, 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 of what we're trying to do is, is pioneering. It's breakthrough. Yeah. You know, 
it's not as though we have a clear vision of where we're going. I use the metaphor that so often we're driving the sustainability bus by looking in the rear view mirror. We, we mm. see what we must get away from, but we yes. can't picture where, where we're going. Uh, you know, so the kind of leadership that can deal with that kind of duality, that can engage people to voluntarily come together. You know, education is 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 not like the private sector. It is about building a feeling of togetherness, solidarity, helping, and urging people to move forward with something that is not that they haven't been trained in and is not a formal part yet of the curriculum. It, it's a very complex thing. So that that kind of of uh, of leadership is yet to be explored. Absolutely, very interesting discussion. And lastly, I want to ask you a challenging question. And the question is, if you can provide a definition of ESD and global citizenship using three key words and explain why you are choosing these uh, three key words. Well, the first one is solidarity. Solidarity. Yeah. And um, I would say uh, others. Mm. With a solidarity with others, mm. and where the others say is uh, not limited to humans, mm. humans and non-humans. Very interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a difference. So the three would be solidarity with others, and if if we had to add another one, and that um, I I think. It it would have to do with acting, mm. action of some sort, engagement. Maybe would be a better, uh, yeah. So solidarity, engagement, others. Excellent, excellent. So very interesting conversation. Thank you so much, Charles. Is uh... A real pleasure to know your perspectives on ESD, global citizenship, the precious activities that you are advancing as uh, the chair uh, at York University. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. And thank you for the opportunity.